Good morning. Welcome to the parish community of St. Francis of Assisi. In the presence of the resurrected Christ, let us praise God singing hymn number 203, Praise to the Lord. Number 203, please stand. morning. On this glorious day, we continue our celebration in the best way that we know how, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My friends, may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. A special welcome to all of you who are here at St. Francis, those of you who are with us every week, and those who are with us maybe for the first time. We are honored that you have chosen to worship with us. This morning in our gospel, Jesus speaks to the deaf man and to all of us. Be open. Be open to what is possible within ourselves. Be open to hearing and seeing in new ways. We take a moment and we recognize that we are people who are creatures of habit. We are accustomed to thinking pretty much the same thing over and over. Today we are invited to think a little differently, to be open to how the voice of God speaks to us, extending his healing that we may become whole. And so we pray. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd who goes after the lost sheep. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the light that helps the blind to see. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the word made flesh that helped the deaf to hear. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, you are the giver of every good gift. We ask that you put within our hearts the love of your name and that with a deepening sense of reverence of what is good and holy, by your watchful care, you will bring to what you have nurtured to bring about your kingdom here on earth. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, 
Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be open, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. The psalm response is number 765. A reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, and you say, pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes, and say, sit here, please. While you say to the poor one, stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord.
My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand upon him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger in the man's ear and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and he said to him, Ephatha, that is, be open. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, he has done all these things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Again, a special good morning to everyone gathered here on this glorious day that looks like it's going to be quite promising and uh, something to uh, partake in. I think this is one of those Gospels that um, I had to sit with for a little while. And I say that namely because um, I am deaf in my right ear. I've had this deafness for my entire life. It's the only thing that I know. It's a nerve deafness. Sometimes people think I am ignoring them, um, but actually my right ear has no hearing. So if you're speaking to my right ear, in some instances, I'm probably not catching everything you're saying. Other times, maybe I am ignoring you, and um, that's just my choice. But just the same, uh, as you ponder the, the wording and the description, uh, someone who is deaf. Not only are they deaf, they are unable to hear the common words, the expressions, the sounds that we take for granted day in and day out. He is unable to speak or communicate in the way that is, again, something that we take for granted. And I look at that scenario and it's almost like being imprisoned. It's like being in this confining imprisonment that uh, knows no way out. How do people like that survive? How do they make it through? And of course, as you think of this particular scenario, there's countless other scenarios that are equally as, um, I think, captivating in the sense that people are limited. They have no freedom. They have no capability of moving beyond the circumstances that they are a part of. And it's not only suffocating, but it is overwhelming. And as you enter into that, you recognize the fortune that you have of being able to enter into it and then enter out. But just the same, there, um, it spoke to me and it spoke very loudly. And yet, I'm reminded that it is often these circumstances that seem so hopeless, that seem so confining, that um, it is usually other people, unexpected people, unexpected circumstances that often come about where God's work is done that provides release, that provides freedom, that provides hope, and provides healing in ways that we couldn't even begin to imagine or comprehend. And I call to mind uh, a movie that came out in the mid-80s. Uh, it is a movie that caught a lot of people by surprise, and uh, it was quite popular. The movie was entitled Mask and it was starring Cher, uh, who at the time was a popular performer and singer, and this really was her debut into acting. And it highlighted the fact that she truly did have acting capabilities. And in the movie, she plays uh, um, Randy. She is a, um, she is a wife, a, 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 a mother, but she is kind of on the margins. She is a drug addict, she is a biker. She hangs out with a gang of bikers. Um, she is a force to be reckoned with. And she kind of lives on the edge. And yet, um, 
She has a son, teenage son, a boy by the name of Randy, who was smart and funny and typical in so many ways of teenage boys. But he has a horrible deformity. His head is completely disproportioned to the size of his body. And the skin on his face is horribly deformed as well. And so as a result, he is a victim of uh, lots of bullying and undue attention and uh, probably prejudice and bias. And of course, his mother uh, is his chief ally and his voice for what is right and just. She, uh, you know, she is a challenge to the school district who thinks that he should really be in a special school, but she thinks otherwise. Later on in the movie, without giving it away, he has to, Randy has to work as a, a counselor at a camp for kids that are pretty much his age, but they are all blind. And lo and behold, he ends up kind of falling in love with um, a girl, teenage girl his age, who he is tutoring, and uh, they have a mutual relationship that is very endearing. And just the same, the fact that she is blind, she's unable to see his deformity. And really, it calls attention to the fact that she really sees what is on the inside, while society focuses more on the outside. And it invites people to kind of reassess what's really important. There's countless different ways in which you can look at the importance of this movie. But just the same, um, it highlights, I think, um, certain truths that we find in today's gospel. And uh, again, usually it's the unexpected people or circumstances that we experience that uh, individuals maybe come into our lives who maybe are able to see past some of the deformities, the uh, imperfections, the sinful inclinations, the uh, poor choices, the addictions that we ourselves try to mask or hide or conceal from other people. And uh, they see us and understand us in a new and different way. They see and recognize our value and our worth and the goodness within ourselves that maybe we don't even see and is not really recognizable by the rest of society. And um, as a result, it uh, is an opportunity for us to uh, kind of grow in a way that we hadn't ever anticipated. The gospel, again, highlights that um, oftentimes these individuals that are able to see beyond what most everybody else focuses and pays attention to, um, they again see something else. And as Jesus speaks to the deaf man and he says, be open, Ephatha, be open. Be open that there is more to you than the deformities or the past mistakes or the poor choices or the sins that continue to kind of um, color your own sense of self. Be open to recognizing your own value and your worth and your goodness and the gifts that you have within yourself that other people, for the most part, might not see. Be open. I think these are the words that um, were very, very much a part of Francis of Assisi when he embraced the dirty, smelly leper. He said, be open. I know that there's more to you than what most of the people within Assisi see. Be open to your own goodness and worth and value. These are the words that I think Randy heard in the movie. I think these are the words that uh, the deaf man heard in the gospel. And I hope that these are the words that you and I hear today, that they speak very loudly to us, that we're able to move beyond, again, sometimes the, the, the things that we believe are really important that aren't, that society sees and views and judges, and that we instead look to really what is within and uh, recognize that the uh, words that Jesus is speaking, he speaks to us as well. And when we are able to say yes to his invitation, that is when our own healing will begin as well. May God's peace and all that is good be with you. Together we stand 
and in one heart and one voice we profess our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now bring our own prayers and our needs and our hopes before the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians to be authentic witnesses to Christ, by our openness to welcome and assist the most helpless among us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a change of heart within world leaders, so as to stop the suffering of people in Gaza, Ukraine, Sudan, and Afghanistan, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing within families who continue to suffer from the wounds inflicted by the September 11th attacks, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For victims of discrimination and prejudice to be accorded the respect and dignity that is theirs as sons and daughters of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For a sensitivity within us toward people with disabilities and handicaps, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For a fruitful year for the students and faculty of the schools of law and pharmacy, Russell Sage, and the Albany Medical College, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For people in the medical profession whose imagination, work, and care are a continued sign of the healing power of God among us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For faith and trust to mark the lives of those who grieve and the eternal life be the hope of our dead in Christ, including Margaret Payne and Peter Williams, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. For the people and situations we hold deep in our hearts and bring to the holy table, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we ask that you to continue to pour forth your spirit upon all of us gathered here. Dispel the darkness of our hearts and of our world. Grant that we may always have a correct faith and a certain hope and a perfect charity as we seek to carry out your holy and true command. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. As we prepare the Lord's table and ourselves to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us join in singing hymn number 535. Prayer of St. Francis, number 535.
Pray, my friends, that this, our sacrifice, will be acceptable to our good and loving God. Good and gracious God, on this holy day, we ask that you accept the special gifts that we bring to your table. The gifts of bread and wine and the gifts of our lives, may they always be acceptable and pleasing to you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks and praise, almighty and ever-loving God, for the countless ways in which you seek to reveal yourself to all the world and through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, we know you are continuously inviting us to change our hearts, that they may come to know healing, reconciliation. Even more, your spirit moves human hearts so that enemies begin to speak to one another. Adversaries join hands in friendship, and people seek the way of peace together. By the working of your spirit, it comes about, O Lord, when hatred is overcome by love, when revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. And so, with endless thanks, we join our voices with the choirs of heaven, and together without end, we acclaim. O Lord, you are holy indeed, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending forth your Spirit upon them, that they may come to know, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread into his sacred hands. He blessed it and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper had ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant be poured forth for you and for all people so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. We give you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and to all your holy people your son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that together with Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Francis of Assisi, and all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in union with the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. Now together we stand in one voice and one heart we pray the prayer Jesus taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. My friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Let us now share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. My friends, behold, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Let us become one voice and body of praise, singing hymn number 796, Be With Me, Lord, number 796.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, may this holy food that we have received, the body and blood of Christ, benefit us through your Son's many gifts. And may we merit to share in eternal life that is promised. For he lives and reigns with you in unity with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. I don't believe there's any uh, announcements. Uh, just look at the bulletin just for updates on uh, what's going on in our parish and the cathedral and uh, plug into whatever you find uh, important. My friends, the Lord be with you. 
let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of us gathered here, renewing us in faith, mind, and spirit, that we may listen attentively to the voice of the Lord and to be open to bringing about his kingdom here on earth. May your blessings come upon all of us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My friends, our celebration has ended, but our lives continue. Let us go in peace to love God and to serve each other. Have a great rest of the day. Enjoy this beautiful day and this beautiful weather and the week that is ahead. Be safe and thank you for coming. Let us go forth singing hymn number 594, Shall We Gather at the River, number 594. Washing up the silver. Blue.